After the sizzle of a campfire supper, the fried onions and potatoes, after the balloon of the moon had floated above the dark desert mountains, Frank and I drove out to the sand dunes to listen for sidewinder rattlesnakes. The rising moon poured light on the sand, sharpening the shadow of every bush, each dent and lizard scrape. We moved carefully, even though the sidewinder is a small snake, only slightly longer than a piccolo, and only moderately poisonous. It didn't take long to find a sidewinder's track. It can't be mistaken for anything else. The sidewinder moves by bracing her tail in the lower part of her body against the sand and throwing her head and body forward. The snake track is a series of diagonal lines drawn across the direction of the snake's path. We followed the track expecting that where the marks disappeared, we would find the snake buried in sand with just its viper eyes sticking out, waiting in ambush for a careless lizard. But no, we found the snake in debris under a stunted mesquite, perfectly patterned like debris under a stunted mesquite. In the disguise and shadow, we could barely make out its curve, so we stepped closer. It is impossible not to jump away from the sound of a rattlesnake, not like a snake, but like an electrical short. We jumped back and crashed and ended up hugging each other to stay upright. That's what you do when you are surprised and unbalanced, don't you? You hold on tight to any available shoulders. We froze, not knowing which way the snake was moving. It was a beautiful night. The breeze smelled of dust and the strong smoky scent of creosote bushes. Moonlight gleamed over the swells of the dunes. The air was cool on our sunburnt skin. In that absolute silence, we could hear the sand hiss under the slight weight of the snake, throwing itself away from us across the dunes. 